Number one. I always thought the Ouija board was just a bunch of crap until it happened to me. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but really just trying to warn you. I have a best friend I've known since I was five years old. Her name is Amber. One night we went to her aunt's house in Five Points, Texas. Her aunt had one of her friends there too. We were supposed to be decorating Amber's aunt's kid's homecoming float, but it was really cold that night so we went inside. Her aunt and her friend had been screwing around with a Ouija board for the past couple of months and even had a regular spirit they contacted. I can't remember its name though. I honestly just thought it was a bunch of bullshit and didn't think anything about it. I was sitting on a recliner in the living room and Amber was sitting on the couch. Her aunt and her friend were doing the Ouija board on the floor in the living room. As I said, I thought it was all a bunch of crap, but was kind of confused when the spirit guy said something about how he saw Amber's aunt watching porn and masturbating. I was confused because if they were bullshitting, why would they say that about her? And She even looked really embarrassed and was trying to play it off. All of a sudden, that same spirit said something that pertained to me, but I can't remember what it was now. We asked it who it was talking. All of a sudden, that same spirit said something that pertained to me, but I can't remember what it was now. We asked it who it was talking about. It said the girl with the brown eyes. I have brown eyes, but so does Amber's aunt, so we asked which one. It said the girl whose favorite color is green. I knew Amber's aunt and her friend wouldn't have known that, but Amber did, so I figured they were all messing with me. It went on to say that I would die in a car wreck from speeding while drinking Miller Lite. Also, it said TRV will see. TRV was the nickname of the guy I was dating at the time named Travis. Only his childhood friends called him that. Amber didn't know that, much less her aunt or her aunt's friend. By this time, Amber started freaking out more than me, if you can believe that. And turn it off. I don't want to hear anything about my friend dying. She almost started crying, which really kind of scared the shit out of me. Now this is where it really gets scary. When Amber's aunt and her friend tried to end the session, her aunt's kid started crying in the room. It was about 1 or 2 a.m. I swear to God, the spirit said kid's room and spelled out demon. Amber's aunt ran to the room and got the kids. One of them said, Mama, I saw it. She asked what he saw, and he just said, it. I'm not making any of this up, I swear. The child had a long rash along his whole right thigh that looked like something had grabbed him. They immediately closed out of the Ouija board, and no one has screwed with it since. Here I am, about five years later, and I'm still alive, but I will say that about a month after the Ouija thing, I did get pulled over for speeding on New Year's Day after drinking like 18 Miller Lights, and Travis drove by and saw it, so who knows? All I know is it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Number 2 Last year, my best friend and I decided to experiment with the Ouija board, just to see if it worked. We made our own out of paper and used a regular drinking glass as a pointer, so we were pretty skeptical. Were we in for a shock? It took a while for the board to warm up, but once it did, it became apparent that we were surrounded by relatives who had passed away. The glass moved extremely slow, and there was nothing scary being said or done, however. Halfway through the session, two of our other friends came bursting into the room laughing and joking. Once they calmed down, we got back to the board. This time, the glass moved extremely fast. We could barely keep our fingers on it. It started spelling out names and words without us even asking questions. The words spelled out included murder and lust. We ended the session immediately. We were pretty freaked out. After that, everything went back to normal for a few days, but then I started waking up at 3 a.m. every night with an unexplainable feeling of dread. This waking up continued for a few weeks and I started becoming depressed for no reason. Then, one night, at about 1 in the morning, My friend was walking me home. As we were walking up the road, he claimed he saw a black figure of a man leaning on a fence and staring at us. We laughed and joked about the place being haunted. We did used to hear bells chiming every night on that road. 
That night, I woke up again, but this time, I was being pinned face down on my bed by what felt like a man. I tried to struggle, but I couldn't move. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. He started speaking in my ear, but I don't know what he said. Then, he was gone. I hid under my covers and soon fell asleep. When I woke up the next morning, I put it down to a nightmare, though it felt so real. A few days later, we had family visiting. My grandma, who claims to be very perceptive, came in and she said she felt there was a presence in the house. My mom said she thought so too, ever since I'd used the Ouija board in my bedroom, but she didn't think it was harmful. My grandma disagreed and said she thought it was evil. This next bit is really hard for me to explain as I don't really know how I felt. They were arguing and I began to get the same dreadful feeling I had so many other nights. I began to feel something was wrong. It felt as though I was being pulled into a tunnel further and farther away from the room I was in. I tried to tell my mom I didn't feel right but I couldn't make myself talk or move. It felt as though something was trying to control me. I finally managed to make myself talk, but I screamed it. There's something wrong with me. The next thing I knew, my sister was beside me hugging me and I was crying and shaking uncontrollably. My family said I'd had what looked like some kind of seizure. We ended up getting a priest to bless the house. And while he was doing so, all the pipes in the house made a huge screaming noise. They didn't stop until he'd finished the prayer. After that, everything went back to normal. Still can't explain what happened to me. And it scares me just to think of it. Number three. When I was growing up, we didn't know about the dangers of a Ouija board. In fact, it was often left as a Christmas gift under the tree. We played with it some back then, but I never thought much of it really. Just figured others were moving it, to be honest. In fact, it wasn't until I was 17 that I witnessed proof, to me anyways that there was more to this board than originally had been believed. My first ex-wife, girlfriend then, was at a party at a friend's house. We were sitting around hitting a pipe at the group. Hey, it was the 80s when the subject of the Ouija board came up. My friend's older brother was talking about it. I was like, dude, the thing's just a bunch of bull. He was like, no man, it really works. You just have to learn how to use it correctly and give it some time. He asked if I wanted to play, and I said no. My ex, on the other hand, was enthused, so they brought out the board and set it up, and they began. I'll never forget that night. I was sitting across the room watching the two of them play. They were asking questions, getting yes or no answers, and I was thinking, what a con. So I started thinking to myself, okay, is this thing really working? Mind you, I'm across the room, nowhere near this board. I start repeating a question over and over in my head, and no one knows I'm doing this. I keep repeating in my thoughts, what's Tanya's middle name? The board starts going really fast in a figure eight, and I hear her ask him, what's going on? He's like, I don't know. Meantime, I'm repeating my question in my head over and over. It stops, and I hear her say, A. Then it starts again. Then I hear him say, N. This continues in E, T, T, E. Then the Ouija board goes back to normal speed. He says, Annette, what's that about? She lets go of the Ouija with her eyes so wide open they looked like they were going to pop out. And she says, that's my middle name. I was like, huh, guess it's not, Bull. He looks across the room and asks, Dude, were you doing that? I just smiled and said yes. Well, needless to say, she was through playing with the Ouija that night. Well, me being me, that really sparked my interest. So for a while, I started experimenting with the Ouija by doing sessions. It surprised me, but it really seemed to be working. I noticed, though, that just about every time we would sit and use this thing, it would increase with intensity. We would always start out talking with one spirit, but then others would come through and take over the board. This one in particular would come through by the name of AJ. Through time, we learned he was a young boy who had drowned. Honestly, we came to think of him as a friend, but then after a few months, his responses became more vulgar in nature. 
sometimes outright hostile, we would start getting on to him, threatening to end the sessions and not return again if he didn't stop. Then the board would start going lightning fast, trail to the letters Zozo. This would keep repeating until we had decided that AJ was throwing a fit. We would say goodbye and put the board away and go on about our day. Well, we were all tired of it, to be honest. It seemed like every time that we would get on it, AJ would take over and not let us communicate with anyone else. So we finally just quit messing with it altogether. Then through the years, we learned the dangers of the board and decided good riddance. Now this is where the story becomes worth telling. Just a couple of years ago, I learned of a paranormal investigator's research into a worldwide phenomenon known as Zozo. Zozo is a spirit, or demon, that has been linked to murders and suicides throughout the world. He comes through Ouija sessions and begins working on the mental stability of its users, searching, I think, for vulnerable victims. Now granted, we did not fall into his game to that point, thank God, but I think it's important for anyone that's thinking about using a Ouija board to be aware of this thing's presence. Number 4 I was working on an old house built in 1915 in Connecticut and staying there by myself. The owner, my fiance, said weird things went on there. She wouldn't stay upstairs anymore after waking up, unable to move late one night after hearing noises. I heard footsteps upstairs at night and saw weird lights in the far room downstairs. I thought maybe the house was settling and the light was shining in from the outside, even though there was no light source outside. One night, I was bored and decided to play Ouija. I had never done it before, and I don't know why I did it. During the session, I felt like I was being watched. I noticed what looked like the faint outlines of a face on the wall. I freaked out and ran in the other room. When I came back in, the face was gone. And there's still more. When I woke up the next day, there were a few broken dishes laying in the kitchen, and my laptop was laying on the ground, almost like somebody had thrown it from the table I had left it on. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, so I didn't remember hearing anything. This house has always had a problem keeping tenants for long. I know two tenants didn't stay there the last few months of the lease. Playing with the Ouija is no joke, and it's dangerous, especially alone, and in a place like that, I never believed in anything paranormal before this night, but now I certainly do. So what do you think? Can Ouija boards summon powerful energies and demonic forces? Or are they just a toy? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you at the witching hour.